What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a reaction video. Now today we are going to be watching Game Theory's most recent FNAF video. It's called Game Theory FNAF Stumped Me Again. Of course, FNAF keeps stumping all of us. I believe this is about Felix the Shark, which is the last Fazbear Frights book. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what Matt Power has to say about all of this. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. <sighs> Would you look at that? Nearly four months without a single oh, FNAF God. episode. It feels like it's a brand new day for the channel. There have been so many new games, new meta theories, even some classic science episodes thrown in. <sighs> I'm happy, I'm healthy. <laughs> I'm healthy. Yeah. Good. And now, time to relax. Fair Internet. enough. Welcome to Jaws Game theme, theory, I guess. the show where old habits and old animatronics die hard. Today we're talking about the 12th and final installment of the Fazbear Frights book series, Felix the Shark. That's right, friends. The, the final only thing I will say is it's a scrapped. Until the next three come out later this year. <laughs> it's a scrapped book. It's like anyway, got scrapped stories, so I wonder how now, he's going to interpret the canonicity of that. Just like all the others, it too is a collection of three short, spooky stories vaguely yes. connected to the wider FNAF lore. But where this one is different is that it's meant to be a collection of cut stories. There we As go. The official description reads, "Quote: Stories that didn't make the cut for the first eleven." At least books, he's addressing that. Which, That's okay, good. They didn't appear in numbers one through eleven, but still, they wound up getting published anyway as the twelfth one. Is that such a big deal? In fact, because they're last, they're probably in the most important position of any of the stories and while you might assume that they were cut because they were weaker or lesser than the 33 other Fazbear Frights that were produced it's not really true you cut the story about an animatronic shark but you kept the one where a boy turns into a <laughs> That's you so cut true. girl solves dead body shoved into animatronic suit mystery but kept tiny guppy bodies you cut a security guard named Mike going around collecting haunted but you kept Fazgoo and yet kept Fazgoo yes we don't pa really know why these oh. were it could have been a quality thing <laughs> It could have been that they confused the lore, or maybe, just maybe, it could have been that they were intentionally designed to set up secret puzzles that we were meant to solve, and those puzzles never got fully realized. Spoiler alert, I think it might have been that last one. I, I don't know. I believe that Scott was planning to use this final book as a launching point, the start of a real-world treasure hunt that would have required using the books, the games, even stuff like the coloring book in that order would have to been crack. Sick. I suspect that this was a riddle so far-reaching and so complex, Wait. it would have required the cooperation of FNAF like an ARG, that would have been so globe. cool. Today, I'm gonna explain the clues that led me to this conclusion, but more importantly, I'm gonna ask you for <gasps> your help. You see, while I'm reasonably confident this thing was never finished, I'm not sure. I can't be sure unless you all double check for me. A few years ago, I asked for all your help in solving the security logbook, and, and a it happened. Later, we Cassidy, yeah. Cassidy. Today, I'm gonna ask We're on this. We've got similar. this. I'm gonna take you on a journey Come on, bro some zones. weird corners <laughs> of FNAF lore and some loose threads that I see in this new book, and then I'm gonna ask you for the favor. I need you to help me either solve this thing once and for all or debunk it. Okay. Who knows? Maybe this is the push Let's that Let's go. This is going to be my mission for the summer, I guess. <laughs> well, before you help me with the lore, I was wondering if you'd help me in another way. It's time for our newest All right. Of all theory. right. Merch. Okay. Let's stop right there and skip ahead. The merch is really cool, but we don't want sponsored segments. We don't like that. <laughs> Check out the full collection. And as always, thank you guys so much for the support. Now back to FNAF. In order to unwrap okay. the secret FNAF ARG, let's start by breaking down the stories in Felix the Shark, shall we? The final story, You're the Band, is probably the most the best obviously story. related to existing FNAF lore. In it, yeah. a small boy named Timmy becomes obsessed with everyone's favorite pizza murder franchise, Freddy Fazbear's. His mother finds him a strange Freddy mask on the internet and gives it to him for his birthday. After putting it on, Timmy starts to change. He doesn't like the things he used to, he becomes moody. I really like this story. It's so cool. Protecting the others when Granddad walks towards him with a knife. Eventually, Timmy is led to an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's building by a shadowy figure. The whole thing gives yeah. off some very solid midnight motorist vibes. In order to I said that. I said that. Up with a former Freddy's security guard I agree named completely. Mike. Hmm. Turns out the Freddy mask was possessed by one of the children from the original Fazbear murders. When Timmy put on the mask, the spirit transferred into his body. I don't it think this story when can Timmy's be canon, though. Restaurant, Timmy is on I can explain later if he doesn't explain. Bonnie and Chica. After getting attacked by the puppet, Mike manages to get the Freddy mask back onto Timmy, which captures the spirit. He then puts the mask back onto the original Freddy head, getting the spirit back to where it belongs. Now, I gotta admit, I got really excited when I read the story. We've suspected for a while that FNAF 1 security guard Mike Schmidt was 
really Michael Afton going from location to location to undo the evils of his father, William. That's why we play as Mike through pretty much every yeah. installment of the series up through Ultimate Custom Night. It's why Mike's name appears in Sister Location, why mm -hmm. Fazbear Frights burns down in FNAF 3, and why the security guard in FNAF 2 is fired for tampering with animatronics and odor, just like Mike was in FNAF 1. Up until now, that theory's never been confirmed, but this story seems to be strong evidence for exactly that idea. A security yeah, guard named Mike I would say going so. around collecting the old artifacts from Freddy locations in order to help free the spirits of those trapped within. So that was already pretty cool and totally made reading this book worthwhile. Anytime we can get more evidence to support a theory within the franchise, absolutely worth it. But while Your the Band was explicitly lore heavy, the other two stories were equally fascinating, but for different reasons. There were details that felt odd or out of place and comments from characters that seemed oddly specific in a way that just triggered my lore hunting senses. In the title story, Felix the Shark, we follow a young man named Dirk who's reminiscing with his what friends about mean? their shared experiences with Freddy Fazbear's. However, yeah. Dirk's memory is nobody remembers different it. to everyone else's. He's convinced well, nobody that there remembers was an extra Felix. animatronic, a shark named Felix. When his friends make yeah. fun of him, Dirk sets off on a cross-country quest to prove that he's not crazy. It takes him six restaurants, but Dirk eventually does learn the truth. It turns out Felix was made by the owner of one very specific Freddy Fazbear's after his son tragically drowned. Why would that lead him to a shark animatronic? Because it was a shark that actually pushed the body back to shore. Couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. Eventually, Dirk does manage to locate Felix. The whole FNAF pizzeria is hidden inside an abandoned water park. But the weird part Correct. isn't the where, but rather the how of finding Felix. You see, Dirk is only able to find the pizzeria using a series of clues that are found in a Yeah, and I thought this was a bit drawn out the in the daughter. final story. In the universe, Felix's creator also had a daughter who grew up to become a popular It was, still, it was the sort of thing where, like, it was a mystery you didn't Dogmatist. really she care that much a about. a series of clues in plain sight within the book's dialogue. These clues ultimately prove meaningless to the characters in the book because they weren't meant for the characters. They were instead meant mm. for the readers to give them information they needed to find Felix. It is very weird. Anyway, Dirk figures all of this out and confronts the author. She gives him her butterfly necklace and he uses all of this Indiana Jones style to unlock a secret key hidden in the bottom of an empty pool at the water park. The key unlocks the path to the secret Freddy's where Dirk It's like, who Felix. kind of, who cares Dirk about how we get there? The tank with Felix because but maybe it will be important. Stories. It's dumb, but, you know, so be it. Anyway, you see what's so yeah, weird that about this, dumb. right? Out of nowhere, it's like how in Hide and Seek, Toby just... Yeah. World location yeah. Hidden inside of another <laughs> you know what I mean. Clues that are meaningless to the characters, but meaningful to the readers. Not only did this stand out to me as a suspiciously meta moment, but it also got me to immediately think about the previous Fazbear Frights installment, Prankster. You see, in preparation for the release of Felix the Shark, I wanted to refresh myself on all the previous stories. There are 33 of these things, after all. It's a yep. lot to keep <laughs> So I found another book, the recently released Ultimate Guidebook, which, if you don't know, has summaries of literally everything that's ever. Is he going to talk about Freddy Fazbear glitch trap in pranks games, to the books to the fan theories? Basically, if you're trying to catch up with the series quickly, it's definitely worth a read. And since this is the third and final edition to the book, one written by Scott Cawthon, you know that whatever is deemed most relevant for the lore is going to be called out within its pages. Anyway, exactly. Each but a lot of people say it's unreliable. Page providing a general plot overview as well. Yeah. Yes, Matt, between the story and the game. Let's go. Not everything here is useful, but it definitely yeah. gets you into the mindset of the authors, and it helps you see some of the connections mm. that the stories were trying to make. Again, if it doesn't yeah. make the cut to appear in this book, you're likely barking down the wrong path. Likewise, if something is called out within these pages, it's at least worth considering when theory crafting. Oh, TLDR, yeah. As I was getting close definitely. to the end of my refresher course, I noticed this in the new lead section for the title story of book 11, Glitch Trap. Quote, some of the puzzle clues, such as Stinger, Moot, and even more... Oh! Oh, that yeah this okay plot. careful yeah. readers may want to give these I forgot about this second look what's he gonna say on the plot you say just like with Felix the shark it appears that the ultimate guide is also pointing us to meta clues within a different book clues True. that are meant for us the readers rather than for the characters in the story so I went back to prankster in this story the main character Jeremiah is trying to save his friends from a mysterious yes. glitchy voice that's freed itself from a FNAF okay. VR I didn't really like prankster that much <laughs> sounds pretty darn familiar Along Along the way, he's presented with a series of riddles. Stinger Moot, which is an anagram of testing room. Give me one yeah. and I'll make more. Each one like the one before. What am I? Your next clue contains even more frights. To get there, you just need to follow the lights. I see you're moving closer to your goal. Follow the lights to make things right. And for the key to find where your friends hide, roll up your sleeves and reach inside. Now, I've gone back and forth over these clues multiple times, but it felt like a lot of them were just pointing back to stuff that we'd already discussed in previous theories. The give
give me one and I'll make more felt like a reference to the glitch trap cult using FNAF VR's tapes to infect more playtesters. Yeah. The following the light clues maybe could be a reference to Princess Quest where we have to light the lanterns to reveal the truth. Uh, and I'm not sure about that. Free, but none of this was new information. We've talked about all of this stuff in depth. Security breach seemed to confirm some of this stuff. And to be honest, the connections I could make were speculative at best. I tried rearranging the letters and the anagrams. Didn't really get anything interesting. I even considered that maybe the stinger moot and even more... I've tried a few things. I can't the figure it out. The Fazbear Frights yeah. books were the epilogues about the stitch raids. So maybe if the yeah. stinger is moot, then the stitch raid stuff is ultimately meaningless. Even more frights might refer to the next set of books. Tales of the Pizza Plex. I mean, sure, that's a valid explanation. It's like, it, was speculation it doesn't mean anything. Also, like, what? <laughs> Why would you go to all the trouble of hiding meta clues like this about stuff that feels ultimately underwhelming? These aren't really questions that people were asking themselves, you know? So, yeah. at least according to the Ultimate Guide, there's definitely something hidden inside of that prankster story. And I'm not exactly sure what it is. But there was even more that was suspicious with Felix the Shark. You see, Dirk doesn't just find the secret Freddy's thanks to written clues inside of a random book. There's also a very specific drawing in the middle of that book. Here's the full quote when describing the dog and dogmatist, the book where the hidden clues are from. Quote, the man's search for the creature was convoluted on the whole, but certain lines in the book went beyond convoluted. They just didn't make sense. Neither did the drawing in the middle of the book, an ornate and frilly sketch of what looked like butterflies and flowers. The drawing it all was seemed to be there for the book, and it no be fully explained the story. reason. Were the no. odd lines and drawings some kind of code? For what purpose? And that's not the only time drawings are brought up in this Can story. Can we talk about the logbook? There was yet another odd reference in Felix the Shark that jumped out to me. Quote again, I'd forgotten all about Freddy's, but yeah, now I remember. I loved the Freddy's coloring books. That's what started my drawing. Oh, no. Eventually, I got tired of coloring and just drew the figures. Last year, the official FNAF yeah. coloring book released, which for a normal franchise would be a big old who cares moment. But here, where the biggest character reveals happened in a spin-off children's activity book, yeah, I wouldn't put anything past this franchise. So true. So it felt strange to mention a okay. real world item for it only to mean nothing. I get so, what you mean by that. Of course, I bought myself the coloring book and the official how to draw book. I went through the pages over and over and over again, but the only thing I was drawing was a blank. Seriously though, I couldn't find anything. Loads of cool pieces of artwork, like this twisted chica that's only ever mentioned by name, but nothing major. I checked with black lights, I heated up a page or two. Black lights, wow. Link. Nothing, or at least nothing that okay. I could find. And then it hit me. What if this wasn't about solving a mystery within the story, but instead something bigger, something more real? The clues in Dirk's book didn't make any sense until you were in the right place at the right time. This could all be hinting at an ARG, where just like Dirk, if you find the location, I would have loved an ARG from this. A FNAF ARG? That would have been so cool. Which leads us to the final story of Felix the, the Shark, scoop. The okay. scoop. In this story, a young girl named Mandy is an online FNAF yep. theorist. No joke, she even signs off one of her posts by saying, and I quote, I can't share all my secret facts yet until I solve this game theory. <laughs> and anyway, Mandy digs through the code of FNAF 3, literally FNAF 3 yeah. the game. It is mentioned she decompiles it. only to discover There's a, a hidden picture. picture of a building. She tracks it down and she learns about a real-life missing children's incident. After a few nightmares where the spirit of the dead child appears, she ends up going to the location only to find an old animatronic bear giving off a nasty smell. Surprise, surprise, the kid was inside of there the whole time. Mandy Imagine Scott great, just like a killed the kid. Finding the Hit child, it in a Freddy suit and saying, made an oh, ARG out of it. That would have been for certain how wow. this mysterious building is connected to the FNAF universe. The only thing I am certain if the creator wanted us to know, wanted us know, I think he would have told us. I think he would yeah. tell us. Wow, just such a good wow. line. Feeling a bit attacked, not gonna lie. Though, in my defense, if we waited it's for so meta. to tell us anything, we'd know next to nothing about this franchise's lore. Just saying. Anyway, outside of the heavy references in this story to theorists and the real world game of FNAF 3, the weirdest thing about this one is that it contains a a lot of specific details as to where the events of the story take place. 33 Fazbear Frights in, and no other story in the franchise features this level of detail. The cities, the street names, file names, locations of buildings, details that are seemingly inconsequential to the greater story, and in pretty much really? every other book would be skimmed okay. over or kept vague. When Mandy finds this mysterious image in the game files, she traces it back to Utah. Yeah. Yes, the actual U.S. state. This fact is further solidified when Mandy's mom takes her on a business trip to Cedar City, mm -hmm. a Real city I have heard of that city. Complete the investigation. Now this is where the trail starts to go cold, because what Mandy's looking for is an old cinema on Willowfield Road in Peace Valley, which yes, after a Peace lot Valley. of Google searches, I can tell you, just doesn't exist. At least not in Utah. Wait. However, oh, in yeah. the story, we do Wait. learn that Peace Valley is only 15 minutes I swear I've heard Peace Valley from, from somewhere else. City, so I looked up where you can drive to in 15 minutes from 
the center of Cedar City. And it turns out there is a very small town just to the south called Canaraville. So I hopped onto Google Street View to check out other details that the book mentioned, like the old cinema, which used to be a pizzeria, as well as having a post office on the corner. Unfortunately, neither of these things seem to exist in Media Canaraville. They do have a post office, and it's near a corner, but it's more like the middle of the street. And so shy of me buying a plane ticket to go to the middle of nowhere Utah myself, my options were once again drying up. So, huh. okay, but what about the actual game? The game Mandy is playing is specifically called out to FNAF be three. FNAF 3. I wondered if Scott had maybe retroactively put a file into the game that maybe everyone's missed, so I went over it's the Steam and It's been decompiled a million times over. It's been updated since April of 2015, and I very much doubt that Scott's been playing a seven-year long con, especially since Into the Pit, the first Fazbear Frights book, didn't hit store shelves until December of 2019. Yeah. But Mandy wasn't just playing FNAF 3, it's explicitly mentioned that she's playing the FNAF 3 mobile port. So I took a look at those update logs. <laughs> oh, this is so convoluted. It hasn't been updated since February of 2020. Now, we don't know when this story got cut in the two years of Fazbear Frights run, so it could have been in existence then, but I'll be honest, I do not have the elite hacker skills to bust open a mobile game to look for the files. Yeah. So, just like that, I was out of options, out of clues, out of ideas. Gotta be honest, I feel kind of defeated on this one. Weeks of looking through these books trying to find something that just wasn't I'm thinking, not sure. I couldn't shake it. The whole thing gave me some big Gravity Falls ARG vibes. For those of you who don't know, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Gravity Falls, did this massive globe-spanning ARG back in 2016. That's really cool. It was a series that was all about hidden mysteries, ciphers, secret codes, complete with a book, much like the survival logbook, that you could buy that contained puzzles and secrets for the fan community. And I wish so, FNAF did more of that sort of launched thing. launched after the conclusion of the show, tasked fans of the series from all corners that is of the map really to cool. work together in a quest that would eventually lead them to a statue of the show's villain, Bill Cipher. No he way! In the middle of the woods. Maybe FNAF was seeding out clues for <sighs> something similar. I wish. there were plans I wish. to do a similar sort of treasure hunt, but the plans got scrapped along the way. I can't be sure, but there were just too But many if it was scrapped, why still release it, you know? Coincidences. That's weird. Regardless, I'd been bested, but that didn't mean I was done. The last time I felt like this was when the survival logbook released. But instead of giving up, I threw the clues that I'd noticed out to you guys. The theorist community to help me solve it. And he came through. We found Cassidy's name. A name that has since been confirmed by yep. Scott himself. So, here I am again at the end of my tether, asking <laughs> you for help once more. It seems like something's here, but if it is, I can't figure it out on my own. Maybe hmm. you're a theorist from Utah and you know the location I'm talking about. Maybe you do know how to break open the files of a mobile game. Maybe you're as obsessed with this franchise as I am and you too have the coloring book and you notice something on those pages that I don't. We haven't let FNAF beat us yet and we're sure as heck not going to let it happen today. If you think you've gotten yourself some answers or maybe just another lead, head on over to the Game Theorist subreddit to post your findings. I'm going to be keeping All a right. very close eye on this one because like you, I want to see this franchise solved. Link is down in the description below to check out the Let's Game do this. subreddit. And <laughs> We've got this. what's below the video, one final reminder about the new okay, theory. Okay, okay, that's, that's it. We're, we're not getting into the theory where, you know, I like where he was going with a lot of that. There's a lot of meta clues in especially the last two Fazbear Frights books. And that is, it's very prevalent. Like, clearly, Prankster, Felix the Shark, and The Scoop, they are all very meta. Uh, and it could be trying to tell us something else. I wasn't too sure about it being an ARG, but now that he brings it up, that actually sounds kind of true, you know? And that would have been so, so cool if th if they decided to, you know, hide something in a water park you know, for like the Felix the Sharks thing, or in this cinema that had been closed down, blah, blah, blah. That would have been so, so cool. But I guess it could have been scrapped because, you know, it was hard to, hard to do a lot of money, I guess. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, I actually think I believe that this, I don't know, it's hard for me to come up with a conclusion like right now, but I somewhat believe it. I somewhat believe that there could have been a bigger thing going on here, uh, mainly because these stories are like really, really random and they're like very treasure hunting, doing this, doing that. So, you know, I think it could have been true, but who knows? We're just going to have to find out. We're going to have to search for clues. Uh, I know I'm going to be searching. You guys have a search at home. 
But uh, yeah, if, if you enjoyed watching this reaction, then please do like this video and subscribe for more content like this. And uh, I've been Ozone, but I have to go Ozone. I will see you later. Goodbye.